Hi everyone, this is Andrew Power. In this video, I wanted to share a way that you can add a, a physical hard drive into vSphere client or into a, a uh, remote machine. For example, I have the HP 54L Pro Liant machine. Um, and no matter where you go, there's a few people that tell you you can't mount a physical hard drive within a virtual um, or VMware environment. So I'm just going to go through quickly and show you how I go about mounting a, uh, a SATA drive in ESXi. Um, so that way you guys, if you, you need any help, you can do it. What I mean by here is we've got the vSphere client and I've got a, uh, a test machine set up with Ubuntu on it. If you go to Edit Virtual Machine Settings and you go to Add a Hard Drive, then what you'll find is you can go through the, the process and you can use existing virtual disk and things like that, but raw device mapping is, is blocked out and quite often you, there's no way, short of creating a new virtual disk uh, or using an existing one, that you can gain access because it's looking for uh, particular files. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a VMDK image from an existing live hard drive that you will then be able to import into this virtual machine section and mount as a real life hard drive. So I'll explain briefly what that means. So first thing you need to do is uh, SSH or Telnet into your um, your server box. So in this case, I've already got it all set up. You've got to log in as root, of course, because well, what's the point of logging in as a, a standard user when we need as much control as possible? Now, full disclaimer, I am not a full Linux nerd and I am not particularly sharing allegiances to any particular operating system. Uh, I'm more of a particular a person who focuses on what can that operating system do for me. Uh, you know, using a computer to get your work done is more important than going, oh well, mine's got more whistles than yours. So the first thing you do after you log in is you need to check out your disks and see what's mounted, what's listed in the way of hardware. Now the way you do that is, of course, uh, change directory to dev disks and then just do an ls and minus l and it will show you something like this. Now what this is, is you don't need to worry about all this VM1 business. What we're looking at here is the actual names of the drive that you can find right here. So these types of names. Now in this case I've actually got a SSD drive as my main drive and then I've got three storage drives. Now you'll notice that this this one here is repeated twice with the colon one on the end. We don't care about that colon one line at all. So one drive ID is here. The next drive ID is to the T10 here and of course the first drive in the bay is here. I'm not going to bother mounting my SSD drive because I actually use that for my virtual partitions so I don't need to worry about that one but in particular the WDCs I need the three codes from that. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, going to end up mounting that particular drive there uh, as in this example and of course it'd just be a rinse and repeat if you have multiple drives if you have a, a NAS unit or a server with eight drives then you just rinse and repeat the same steps that we're about to do so now that we've found the ID codes the drive ID codes we need to go and set up the virtual media file system so you change to the right directory and if you do an LS you'll see a whole heap of stuff here. I've already got a data store directory. Now in the data store directory, I've gone ahead and set up an RDM folder. Now you don't have to do this, but this is just, uh, 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 I guess, a, a best place to, to store all of the one type of uh, files, so to speak. Now at this point, what you need to do is you've got the code for the drive, you've got you're in the right directory so now what we need to do is create a virtual link to the existing drive and we do that with VMKFS tools so what we're going to do is we type in the command VM KFS tools minus Z and then what we need to do is direct it to the existing um, location for that device which uh, it's a disk and then what we need to do is this code that we've copied up the top here, this T10 code, we can just paste that straight in. Now what we need to do 
So what we're basically saying is link this location and now we've got to provide the place we want it to create this fake file, this RDM file um, that uh, vSphere will be able to interact with. So this is where it creates a file and then the file is going to be the same size as the hard drive. Don't freak out, it's not actually storing it anywhere, it's, it's more of a um, it's just a representative file that it can work with, but it is an actual hard drive. So now we need to t paste in our location. So in this case, it's VMFS, uh, volumes. Oop, might help if I write volumes, right? There we go. Um, so because I've already set up a data store directory in volumes, I'm actually going to put it there. And because I've created an RDM folder, I'll put it in that. And now what I want to do is give it a, a meaningful RDM name. So in this case, this is a uh, an old two terabyte uh, WD green I've got. So I, I could call it anything I want. Um, I'm just going to call it old two TB because that's something that means something to me. Uh, and of course, it's my system, so it needs to be meaningful to the operator. And then you follow it up with a dot VMDK. Now, as soon as you hit enter, it does that. Pow right in the kisser. And what it's gone and done is it's created that link, that file, and um, and then basically it's created that link to that drive into that file. So I would then go ahead and I would um, get the next drive and rinse and repeat that process. And I'm going to do one more just for the sake of this. And we'll call this one, this one in particular, this drive is a, uh, a new T. 2TB, so make it nice and easy. Now just delete that last code, paste the new one in, and Bob Girardi. So we hit enter, it's now made the two, and followed up in this case with the new 3 terabyte. And if you're wondering how I know the 2 terabyte, 3 terabyte, and everything like that, the thing about Western Digital Drives. If you haven't already looked at the number, it's got Western Digital, and then the number after it, if it's 2O, it's a 2 terabyte. If it's a 3O, it's a 3 terabyte. EARX is a green, EFRX is a red. So you can actually, if you learn the codes, scarily enough, you can identify what drive you're talking about. So in this case, this one's a new 3 terabyte. And you simply delete the device code and paste in the new one. And that's it. So what I've gone, I've gone and created three new VMDK files. And, uh, and essentially that is it. So now if I come back to my vSphere client in my drive setup, I'd go to edit virtual machine settings and you'll see there's no new hard drive. So you might go, well, what do we just do? So at this point you go add hard drive or hard disk Go next, and this time we're going to go use an existing virtual disk because we've gone and made them now. We don't have to create one. We've already just created it. Now we hit browse, go to our data store, our RDM, and if you've done it right, you'll see files that match up with everything that we've just said. So from this, I can go, oh, okay, yeah, I want to add that. Click OK. Uh, just click next. Just leave it all, all fine. Now, you want to mark it as independent because it's a storage drive. Unless you're running an operating system on it and you want snapshots to capture that, uh, you don't really need it as a dependent drive. You hit next, hit finish, and there's a new mapped raw LUN. And you'd simply just add another drive, hard disk, and you could just do the exact same thing I just did again. Browse, data store, RDM, add the two terabyte, next. Independence not checked, that's cool. Um, so yeah, so the not effect, we want it independent, we hit next, finish. And if you do um, mark it as dependent by accident, and sometimes you can overlook it when you're adding drives and you're zipping through fe functions like this, what will happen is you'll go to do a snapshot in, uh, in, <laughs> in vSphere, you'll go to do a snapshot and it will have a bit of a bitch and a moan about, oh, you know, there's a drive dependency issue, blah, blah, blah. All that means is go and check these disks that you've added and make sure that you've got that independent checked because that will mean that it won't take that into account when it's trying to do a snapshot. So I've gone and mapped three new drives, hit OK, and that's it. I'm done. At this point, I could power on the machine and I'd have full access to all those hard drives that I've just added.
Now, a bit of a long, long-winded video, but I really wanted to sort of show uh, the noobs to, to uh, Linux, and I certainly put my hand up there, um, how to mount these drives within vSphere and, uh, and ASCII, because, look, I, I did some searching around, I couldn't find any videos, and uh, once I'd finally worked out how to do, do it with a culmination of about 10 different websites, I thought, you know what, it's a, it's a lot easier if you streamline it like this. So I hope this video helps. Um, and I hope you can map all your drives. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'll be happy to try and help uh, answer them. All right, have a great day.